Okay, hi everybody. Um, they say we have a number of speakers today, so I, I, I'll try not to keep you too long, try and get my timing right. Um, I'm going to start off with a, a slide just to show you who we are, the, the partners, and I'll give you a bit of background to the, the reason, the rationale for, for devising this project. Okay, this is, this is a, a picture taken at our first DAMP meeting in Coleraine two years ago. So I'll introduce you to the, the people in the photograph. And the, the back row is Corolla for a start. And then we have um, from IABA, the European Association for Behavior Analysis, we have Dr. Neil Martin, who is the Applied Science Representative of IABA and the International Representative for the Behavior Analysis Certification Board. From Iceland, we have Dr. Laura John's daughter from the State Diagnostic and Counseling Centre. By the way, my pronunciation of some of these names is diabolical. Okay, um, then we have from the Netherlands, Dr. Jacqueline Schenk from the Institute of Psychology at Erasmus University in Rotterdam. From Italy, Professor Paolo Moderato from the European Institute for the Study of Human Behaviour in Parma. From Sweden, Dr. Lisa Rule Peterson Pedersen from the Department of Special Education in Stockholm University. Pete with Lindsay Mulcahy. Now, Paolo can't make it today, but I'm delighted to say that um, Nani Presti is going to be representing Paolo today, representing Italy. Um, on the bottom then, on the right, we have Nicola Booth from Pete and myself and Stephen Gallagher in the, in the front there. On the right hand side, the chairperson of Pete, Tony Byrne, Professor Tony Byrne from Spain. Now, this is the one that caused me problems. Dr. Javier Verruez Otego, stuff my God. And then Dr. Katerina Dunavi from the School of Education in Queens here. Then from Germany, Professor Hans Rudiger Rutgers from Fachhochschule in Münster. And from Norway, Dr. Bolger Stromgren from Oslo and Akersis University College of Applied Sciences. So this is this is the team that's been working on this project that I'll talk about. Now, these, this is a couple of other people who aren't involved in the STAMP team, but nevertheless have been inspired by what Pete has been doing in Northern Ireland. Um, Stephen and I were invited as their keynote speakers in their first ABA conference in Portugal. So this is Sergio Baptista on the left, the guy with the glasses and his wife Carla, and that little inset, Carla Martins, uh, they went on to set up uh, an organization called My Kid Up in Portugal. Okay, so they've translated Simple Steps as well into Portuguese. So it's quite a, a flurry of activity come from this little part of Western Europe. Okay, so my introduction then. So let me start off with, with a personal note. I don't have a child with autism. What I do have though is the experience of nearly losing a child. The heartache and panic I experienced then gives me some insight, I think, for, for my best guess, to the plight of parents who first faced a diagnosis of autism. As if to emphasize the point about the pain we're talking about, not so long ago in this community, parents were offered bereavement counselling after receiving the diagnosis. But after today, I would like to see that offer being replaced with a totally different offer. I'd like to see one based on hope, based on the hope offered by science of behaviour analysis. I would like to see parents, when they, when they receive the diagnosis, being offered a copy of Simple Steps and being offered support by a professional behavioural analyst. That's what I'd like to see. Now, to put my aspirations in some context, there are a couple of quotations drawn from a number of resources. Two from Nelson Mandela. And this second one from, as you can see, relates to education. 
is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. And to make no mistake about it, our goal here today is to offer education and a science of behaviour that will help change the world of autism for parents. And this is a bold statement, but one based on evidence to say that this is actually possible. And we have been working at it for 17 years, saying many of the things that, that you've heard this morning. 17 years, there's something, something not right there. Is it just us that we're doing a very poor job on it? Or what, what gives? Now this next slide was given to me by a parent and it summarizes the experience of parents. Now I've sanitized the text somewhat. So when the establishment looks down, all they see are troublemakers and the parents at the bottom, when they look up, all they see are obstacles. So this captures the essence of how parents feel in, in Ireland and the UK when they've sought investment, m many of the issues that, that um, Laurie's picked up on, when they've sought investment in the, for a science of behaviour analysis. And what happens is that the evidence for applied behaviour analysis is totally ignored and there's preference for an eclectic approach. But when you ask for the evidence for an eclectic approach, there isn't any. Yet government policies, north and south, are based on an eclectic approach. And the other thing that Laurie said about the media, we have tried, we have, we've had a couple of documentaries, I think, not specifically on ABA, but the families asking for ABA. That still hasn't changed anything. And I've done extensive lobbying with the media, and I can only conclude that they're not interested in your children. Okay? The media are not interested in your children. Otherwise, they would be there beside you to help you. So, I can't do it all. You guys have to organize yourselves. What we've been doing is something like this. And I thank Jacqueline for this, this idea of how to present what we're doing. My colleagues here today from across Europe have poured hours and hours of hard work into developing educational tools for parents in their respective countries. But it should be pointed out that they didn't have to do this. They could, they could quite easily have an academic career that doesn't connect directly with the community. But they didn't. They care about children, about parents, about alleviating suffering. They are a special group of behavioural analysts who are committed to educating others about their science. And this is no easy feat when you consider that the science is still relatively, relatively young in their own countries. It's all very well saying, here's a million dollars, a million pounds, a million whatever, go get your ABA, when there's nobody trained in the community. So the history of science, I'm just going this one, rambling on a bit. What we're looking at here is that the history of science is not a mere record of isolated discoveries. It's a narrative of conflict of two contending powers, the expansive force of the human intellect on one side and the compression arising from traditional practices and self-interest on the other. And in my abstract, I provided this quotation from John F. Kennedy, but this sentiment is best supported by another quotation, this one from Schopenhauer. Every truth passes through three stages before it is recognized. In the first, it is ridiculed. In the second, it is opposed. And in the third, it is regarded as self-evident. We're passing through these stages, and we've all got the scars to show the extent of uh, what we're doing or the effects of what we're doing. But we're getting there. But we're not the first to experience hostility when introducing basic science to an establishment resistant to change. During the Crimean War in 1853, the military officers and doctors took Florence Nightingale's protestations against the conditions in which soldiers were treated as personal insults, and she received little help. Rather than cave in, she used her contacts with the Times newspapers to report details to the public. Florence brought science to the hospital ward. What we launched today is an opportunity for parents to be, board, to be empowered with science in their homes. This surely is better than promoting treatments that have no scientific evidence of effectiveness but are popular nonetheless. Now, in many ways, Simple Steps is a, is a work in progress, but we have a good basis 
from which to proceed. And I'd like to thank uh, Lester Malney for being by our side during this, this, this journey. And in particular, I'd like to give a special thanks to Jude Lynch. Um, Jude is one of those creative individuals who can take a, an idea that we've had as the professionals and help make it accessible to parents. Um, picking up on something that Laurie said about pulling together, there has been fragmentation in Northern Ireland. When I started the Pete Group all those years ago, we had a, a good group of parents who were motivated and working together as a team. That got fragmented. Um, that, needs to be, that needs to be changed. And those master students that we have now produced for the community, they need to realize that they need to work with the parents. The parents didn't have autistic children, so you could have a job, okay? You have an ethical responsibility to lobby for your science and not leave it up to the parents to do it for you. So you want to work with the parents to help those kids, and that way you will secure your jobs. A little quote from Mahatma Gandhi, be the change that you want to see in the world. Now I want to finish by turning to Pete, the first autism child in Ireland to have promotion of evidence-based practice in its mission statement. Pete has prepared the ground for all of us here today, and academics in Queens and UU have stood by them through thick and thin. It may not advertise itself as, autism, as Northern Ireland's autism charity, but it is known internationally as Northern Ireland's best hope for bringing science to bear in the treatment of autism. So now I want to hand you over to the chairperson of Pete, Professor Tony Byrne. Tony is, is one of those parent heroes, often maligned for daring to speak up for applied behaviour analysis, for not letting the science be watered down to appease those in authority who are uncomfortable with a thorn on their side. Had Florence Nightingale caved in, I don't know where nursing will be today, but I regard Tony's commitment to be in the same level of importance for the continued survival sorry, of, of ABA in, in Northern Ireland. Okay, so Tony will present and then we'll have each of the, the uh, STAMP team give short presentations to let you see the impact, potential impact that they receive for, for simple steps in their country. Okay, 